We're going to re-establish free elections. <laughs> After conquering a third of the world, we're going to decide to have elections. Oh, man, I love this game. Hey! I'm Feedback Gaming, and this is more Hearts of Iron 4, the World War II strategy game. You guys liked the last exploit, so why not double down? Why not triple down? Why not quadruple down and show you how to make this exploit even more broken? And let's do that. To summarize, the two glitches we're going to use today is going to be the rename glitch to get a huge amount of equipment in one go, particularly tanks. And the second exploit is going to be to go down both paths of the focus tree, the German Empire and also the German Reich. This was originally referred to as the Bypass Rhineland glitch. And I thought in Man the Guns, they'd fix this. Guess not. The only thing this exploit can't do is spawn planes. So what we can do early on is just mass produce an absolute crap ton of juicy aircraft. Also, I guess we can't actually spawn any uh, ships either, so we'll just produce the ones we've already got. The first focus we want to rush towards is Treaty with the USSR, so we can rush medium tanks. Don't need the tungsten, and we're going to get a bunch of rubber from the Dutch East Indies. Let's go. We've got boost now for our doctrine, so rushing those is a good idea. Also, radio early on is a good idea too, because there's a few wars we're going to be involved in. We've got over 150 political power. Now, we're going to fabricate on the Netherlands on three states. 345 days, remember that and also fabricate on Poland, 350 days. See that? Within a week margin, so we can declare at almost exactly the same time. Gonna go for army innovations to get the boost for tanks as well as the army XP. And now we've got the treaty with the USSR. There we go. Go for medium tank and rush it. Gonna split off our army into two separate pieces. This one's got more of the mobile troops. Push into here. And take out the Netherlands pretty much immediately. And this one will hold the Eastern Front. Once you get around about 50 days worth on Disperse Industry 1, you can take advantage for a four-year plan to go for Disperse 3 and 4. Beware, spending political power right now on advisors is probably not a good idea. Remember, you're going to fire the civil war for the German Empire. So some of these advisors, you're going to lose. So in my advice, hold on to the political power. There we go, we've timed that perfectly. We've just started Disperse 2, and now we have the 50% boost for Disperse 3 and 4. Right, now I'm going to work towards the free civilian factories on these focuses. Going to send my old planes to Nationalist Spain so I can get a bit of air XP. Open up your diplomacy screen, and you can hover over and see when the fabrications are going to complete. So we now have another two months until April. The one thing you need to do to make this tactic work the most effectively is lots of army XP. And you're probably thinking, Dave, you barely got any army XP right now. How are you going to be able to pull this off? Well, the army XP we're going to get is going to be from fighting Poland and the Netherlands. Right, the justification on Holland is finished. And the one on Poland is finished too. So, you need to declare these exactly the same time. Because when you declare war on one, world tension will spike over 25%. And that is the criteria that France or the UK can guarantee a nation. If I let a single hour of game time continue right now, it would cause the Netherlands to get guaranteed by one of those two major powers. So we declare immediately. And right now, we've not created a world war situation because France and the UK are going to keep out of it. Exceptionally straightforward. A little bit too easy. And peace conference. Sorted. Right now, it's not looking too good. Poland's pushing into us. They've got twice as many divisions than us. Not looking too good, right? Nah, this is going great. We're getting loads of army XP. And we're stalling this war situation. Let's get that air XP to good use. Just a little recap. So we're letting them burn themselves out by attacking us over and over again. Getting lots of experience. Spending it on uh, fighter doctrines, computer machine, industry, doctrines. And it's time to counterattack. Demolishing them. It is time to go for oppose Hitler. Okay, so you don't want to capitulate Poland, all right? Ooh, 98%. That was close. Uh, just sit on the front line for now. And then we can make our ideal super division. Don't spend your army experience. We need it. So just stay here for the time being. And then you can go down the line of oppose Hitler. But whilst we're at war, we have the ability to bypass Rhineland. Now, we've unlocked both sides of the focus tree. If you would like to see me do this exploit and form the EU. That's right, the EU. Click on the I in the top right right now right we've not got left now until post hitler fires and that'll cause a civil war so we're gonna attack now and end poland rip oh, that's pretty beautiful right 1938 that looks pretty good i personally don't care for these divisions so we're just gonna get rid of all of them time to make 
the super division. The big one. Medium tanks. For all. That looks right to me. Boom. The name of the division you need to pop into here is Landstrom Regiment. Rename. Oh no! The country is split in half. But what do we have here? Oh, hello. These divisions look very big, very girthy. Oof. Oof. Oof, that's a lot of equipment. How much equipment? 22,000 guns, 18,000 motorized, 12,000 tanks. A lot of equipment. Pop you boys into position. And at the same time, why not get an extra research slot? One of the little glitch that's pretty handy is to try and trade away almost the entirety of your factories. And that way, you'll appear smaller and weaker. So it'll allow you to go for total mobilization. There we go. Can go for total mobilization now. I had to let Germany take some of the factories in Poland. So we had less factories overall. And at the same time, so I don't lose all my manpower, I'm going to go for extensive conscription. Let us end this silly civil war. Silly indeed. Rip. As I said in my previous video, be very careful because when the civil war ends, you will lose this division. So just give it a slightly different name. All right, let's sort out our production now. Don't need nowhere as many of these. Need to make a handful of guns. Support equipment's always worthwhile. A little bit of artillery because we've already got enough anyway. And a little bit of AA as well. And of course, medium tanks. Got a lot of broken factories, so let's fix those ones now. I have no idea why this has happened, but Italy's Johnny Axis and is at war with me. <laughs> I have no idea why. There is a way around this, though. All we need to do is do Anschluss of Austria, and then I get a free Italy. Make loads and loads of these divisions. So for us to do Anschluss, we need 550,000 manpower in the field. We currently are just shy of 500,000. So what I'm going to do is train a bunch of troops, deploy them early, and then we've got some kick-ass firepower. What I'm also going to do is make these divisions smaller to make them a little bit more usable. At the moment, there's way too many tanks in here. Got better organization, and now it's a 40 width division. We'll go for man, for a change, fighters, blitzkrieg theorist, captain of industry, armor genius, infantry expert. Ooh, and that guy's new. Hans Oster, anti-fascist agent. Yes. And also let's bring back our air wings as well. We've got a lot of them. There we go. And we'll also give them exercises too. Anschluss. Boom. That is a free Austria. Now we get a free Italy. Right, let me change tactics here. We're not going to be able to break through these mountains. Uh, so what I need to do is fall back... With, let's say 12 divisions and hold this area a little behind on motorized so what I'm gonna do is just adjust this template ever so slightly take off one motorized two motorized and then add the tanks back on to get a 40 width and that's balanced it out perfect right now these divisions are all level two they're gonna be in way better fighting shape there's two things going on here that's going to be at my advantage. One, we've had time to level them up to level two. Now they won't suffer from that minus 25% penalty. We're going to be fighting mostly on flat terrain. And three, Mr. August is going to have a 20% attack bonus for attacking into core territory, which all of this is. But the result of this is I should demolish them. All right, boys, counterattack time. Beautiful. Oh my God, that is way more than beautiful. That is amazing. Oh my goodness, that is... Alright, that's way better than I expected it to go. Okay, never mind. And there's literally no divisions on this front line now. We're just pushing directly into them. Oh my god, this is awesome. And surprisingly, the uh, the Civil War events seem to be firing still. Okay. And that is the entirety here and here. The entirety of the Italian army encircled. Yep. <laughs> that's all of them. All right, aggressive, go. This pocket should just close instantly. Yep, there we go. So remember, I didn't fight them that much prior to this, so the vast majority of all these divisions we take out here should be the entirety of the encirclement. We're gonna look at the casualties in just a moment. We didn't really fight them that much on this front line here, just a little bit of a back and forth, little skirmishes and whatnot. 
So the entirety of this pocket and this pocket should be, for the most part, all the casualties. And it's just shy of 900,000. Holy moly. Only 32 divisions left. They had 130 before. I've just spotted something. They're going for Albanian occupation. Do you know what? I'm not going to finish them off. I'm going to wait for them to get Albania. Then I'll capitulate because then I'll get Albania. Why do I want Albania? I don't even know, bro. I want Albania. <laughs> Rip. All right. Secure the new state. 1939, guys. This is 1939. German military junta. I don't know why the font is so small, though. As soon as this is an exploit video, we're just going to spam submarines because that works right. There we go. Lots of infantry to hold the front line. We can always train more infantry as well. Okay, the easy option here is France and the UK. France, dead easy. Bam, knock them out. Take a few victory points. It's over. UK, slightly more tricky. Getting troops onto the UK is a little bit more difficult. Bam, done. So let's do something different. Let's go east. Here we go. Five full armies. One huge army group. Most of them at the moment. I trained to level three. I think he's going to be pretty brutal on the front line. Okay, little recap what's going on. Build the infrastructure on the front line here, maxed out, as well as a route to the capital. So I get the most amount of supply in these little congested areas. And uh, with that as well, making naval dockyards for a, an eventual invasion of the UK, as well as maybe USA at some point. Not really using my national focus, as I don't really want to go for these ones, because it's probably going to end up with them joining the Allies and causing me problems. Search-wise, working on a Blitzkrieg, we're working on our sub-doctrine, artillery for soft attack, and we're just working on our raw guns. One thing that has dawned on me, the future keeping when you logistics companies, it's just a... I've noticed from every game I play now, I always end up making it, so I might as well just get it early. Regarding the tanks, they are going to push into the south, in the lowlands, and try and circle as many divisions as possible. This is fun to see without me intervening that Hungary is now grabbing southern Slovakia and pushed into Transylvania. Alright, we're going to go crazy with logistics. Everyone gets logistics. We only need... No, we need nothing. We are a little bit low on manpower though. That's a bit of a concern. I've just unlocked the cruiser submarine and it never even dawned on me that it has extra fuel tank upgrades to get extra range. That is really cool but it's nothing compared to this awesome sub three all right we're gonna have to disband some air wings to get manpower back it's time boys let's go do or die time oh my goodness the destruction oh <laughs> the overruns they're insane the western flank has completely collapsed i have never seen a soviet union demolished this quickly let's just do what the germans couldn't do let's just push eastwards and take the uh the oil fields now encircling is one thing but i don't think there's anything that matches the beauty of an overrun that just lets you know that little bit of feedback that says you know what dude you're not doing good you're doing really good bro you're doing really good let's start raiding all the way around here and the question is why well why the reason why is because uh spain's joined the common turn nice oh war in europe greater east prosperity sphere versus allies this is an unusual push the front line hasn't moved we pushed through the south here made this big tumor and now we're uh, encircling moscow and pushing into moscow from the other side this is a bit of a strange game all right we're going to push from moscow to Leningrad. This game gets wonkier and wonkier. From coast to coast. The result? Six million losses. F in the comments. Now I'm really curious to see what this is going to do. Because we've got a very huge Czechoslovakia here that have eaten Hungary. I'm really curious to see what happens. And they just say no. <laughs> and and Czechs resist. Alright, let's just declare on them. Belgium, here we go. France isn't joining the war, even though they're part of the Allies. I think it's because we've got so many troops on their border and they're reluctant. So, we're going to have to force them. 25 days. France, you're next. If the Soviets couldn't hold, you have no chance. Are they even trying? Rip France. Now we need to very quickly break Spain to get a peace conference. End them. That is a big font. We're going to re-establish free elections. <laughs> After conquering a third of the world, we're going to 
decide to have elections. <laughs> oh man, I love this game. All right, let's take care of this check problem. They won't be able to handle our tank divisions. Yay, get rid of them. The supply routes in the Atlantic and also Cape of Africa. As well. And let's also bomb the living hell out of the English Channel. Oh my goodness, 13 strikes in one day. 20 strikes in one day. We're getting so much XP, we can make new variants pretty much like every other day. Uh, a lot of people ask me, like, what should I go for for fighters? Oh, aim for engines to begin with, then weapons. And you need reliability to balance out the weapons, otherwise you'll get lots of accidents. It actually says here what helps in dogfights. You've got air, air attack, agility, and speed. If you try and get the highest values possible, you will always win those dogfights. This is a really OP national focus. Rebuild the nation. Minus consumer goods, minus 20% for 365 days. That is just, that is so insane. You think about it, it's a percentage. So the larger your nation is to begin with, the more you benefit from that, which is just amazing. The best thing I can do in this period when I've got a lot of damaged factories is not to repair them because I can't be asked to suppress them. But what I'm going to do is just build up loads of civvies. And those civvies later in the game will help us make all these repairs that I've just neglected. All of this oh boy we're now officially democratic our first decree ban fascism and ban communism we will be radical centrists all right after bombing them in the english channel for feels like a very long time we're not seem to be making much progress anymore i wonder if there's a way we can like lure them out with our main fleet let's put our main fleet on mm, we'll try combo raiding all right there we go. Full control of the English Channel. Let's go. And we have landed. There we go. Full army. Wipe out the UK. Damn, easy. Easy! Where are all the British divisions? They've got 200 and we only seem like five of them here? Damn, that was... An exceptionally quick wipe of the UK. Jeez. We have two new advisors we can go for. We have the liberal journalist and the connected citizen. All right, we'll go with the citizen. This game is all about the big plays, right? So let's go here to here. All right, there's a lot of enemy ships in this tile. 335 to be precise. So we will bury them. I think it's silly that you're able to do this. You can produce so much rubber in Germany than in Malaya just by building refineries. I like the way it was in Hearts of Iron 2 where like refineries had, synthetic refineries had to be turned on or off. It just felt more realistic and it costs like, like your economy to keep these refineries going because they're so taxing on there. I don't know, that felt like a better system than just giving us free stuff for building a building. Oh, it's here. We don't have control of this region. Will that be enough? Yep, it will. Let's go. Will this work? Well, let us find out. These attack plans look like spaghetti. All right, we've landed. We've captured a port too. We need to build two big ports, infrastructure, anti-air, radar, airport. All right, we need fighters desperately. Let's bring in our best. One, two, three, four of you. Go, go, go. Hey, we broke them. Nice. Gonna be fixing that infrastructure as well. That's important. Look at these tanks. They've got so much firepower. They can hold their own. It's insane. Two full air bases maxed out. And we still have amber air. Not got green air yet. You know what I'm going to do right now? I'm just going to sit and chill and let them come to us. There we go. The Maginot of Canada. The air situation isn't looking too good for the Allies right now. That's it. To attack me over and over and over. Even when the outcome does not change. I've always wondered why the AI actually does this, you know. I've noticed when you scale up the difficulty of nations like the bar at the start of the game for like the Soviets. They tend to do this quite often, so you can kind of glitch them to burn all their equipment, like, just doing this motion. But, I don't know, I feel like they do it more and more these days in the latest patch. That way we won't have any big gaps. I was going to send the infantry that I'm training back in Europe, but I don't think there's any point. I think we can break them without them. It is the end game. Canada is holding quite well, but I can't say the same about USA. They're getting completely dumpstered. Alright, there is a way around this, and what we do is go into logistics and say... Supply fuel to air and navy, but not army. The penalty for army is just reduction of speed. The penalty for air and navy is like attack modifiers and defense modifiers and all the other bad stuff like that. So it's just better if we 
just let the penalty hit the tanks. I mean, slower tanks is not the end of the world, really. Washington holding out with a level 10-4. You know what I'm going to do. You know what I'm going to do? I don't use this very often because I don't usually go for tactical bombers. So I'm going to go fort destroy. Blow those forts up down. This has probably been the easiest break of America that I've ever done. I just don't even feel like they put up any kind of resistance. Sure, landing was the hard part, but when I got to here, it was it was already won anyway. And you're probably thinking, why am I taking out the Raj? Fortunately, they become a major power. Probably down to the amount of factories they've got. They are pretty strong, factory-wise. Rip! United States. Canada, the other United States. All gone. Air supply. So just letting you know about air supply, if anyone doesn't know, I wasn't aware until recently, is they drop supplies off. Hey, hey. And uh, they drop them from transport planes. Uh, if you don't have air superiority, you will lose a lot of transport planes, and they're very expensive, so that's not something I would recommend you do. And in this case, we're getting no extra supply, because we're not even in this region. I just see all the Himalayas here. Maybe it only works for friendly territory, I don't know. And also, no, it does use command power as well. Proportional based on how many transport planes you do actually have. The more transport planes, the more it will cost. Oh, there we go. We get an extra 1.89 supply. Wow! Whoa! 475 convoys? That is very spicy. How many convoys have they got in total? This is pretty much the entirety of their convoys. They're moving in one go. With no escort. Well done, India. It's over. We did it. Okay, I, I refuse to spend hours in the peace conference, like, creating pretty borders, okay? But there we go. And that's it, guys. There is one thing I need to do in this campaign, though. Is there something missing here? What's missing? Tell me what I haven't done. If you know, comment below. Because I'm going to do it in three, two, one. There you go. European Union. 